Number one, if you were to write out the electron configuration, you will see that option C, phosphorus, will have a configuration that ends with 3p3. So three of the electrons in the orbitals, the p orbitals, will be unpaired. Number two, radon, francium, and radium, which one will have the will be the most endothermic first ionization energy? It means the hardest to remove the electron. Radon, you have to know that radon is one period above the other two elements, so it will be the most difficult to remove that first electron for radon. So that gives us option A. Why is it easier to remove francium compared to radian? You have to remember that francium has less protons than radian, so the effective nuclear charge for francium is lower. Number three, which gas closely approaches ideal at room temperature and pressure? You have to look for the one that has the least intermolecular attraction. That will mean that we are comparing the ones that have van der Waals forces. Ammonia has hydrogen bonding, so that will be out. Between the, the three that has van der Waals forces, helium has the lowest MR, so it will have the lowest intermolecular attraction. Number four, you have to calculate the changes in energy. For P is bond breaking, so it will be plus 193, breaking of the Br bond. Q will be bond forming, so it will be exothermic, forming of chlorine. R, bond breaking, sorry, bond forming, so exothermic. S is a CH bond also, but it's bond breaking, so it's endothermic. And then most negative to the most positive, we will have R followed by Q, then P, then S. Number five, what is the standard enthalpy change of formation of iodine trichloride? Now, we have these two equations. We can combine them first. And when we combine, we can actually cancel out those that appear on the left and the right side. And when, when we do that, we actually have I2 plus 3Cl2 gives us 2ICl3 solid. And when we combine them, we will just take this number, negative 214 plus 38. That's why we have minus 176 here. But this is not the formation of iodine trichloride because we need to have one mole of ICl3. So from here, 176, we change it to one mole, we have to divide throughout by 2. So 176 divided by 2 will give us minus 88. This is the heat of formation of 1 mole of iodine trichloride. Number 6, ammonium nitrate can decompose when heated. So what are the changes in the two nitrogen atoms? We have nitrogen atom in ammonia, which is minus 3. The nitrogen atom in nitrates is plus 5. And then they form N2O, which is plus 1. So the change from minus 3 to plus 1 increased by 4. From 5, plus 5 to plus 1, it decreases by 4. Haber process, what happens when temperature is increased? When temperature increases, all the species will have higher energy. So actually the backward reaction and the forward reaction both should be increasing. If you're wondering why then is there a shift in equilibrium, if you look at the change in enthalpy, we can see that this is exothermic when temperature increases 
we will expect the equilibrium to shift backwards. So what is actually happening is actually the forward reaction is increasing when temperature increase, but the backward rate of reaction increases even more. So that overall, okay, we get the shift to the left side. Number eight, we have group two metal reacts with chlorine. We will get our metal chloride. So we form an equation. These are the number, these are the masses that are involved. From the mass, we will convert to moles, which we don't know the MR, but we leave it as unknown. 2.92 over MR of X, 5.287 over MR of X plus the chlorine here, which is 71. The ratio is 1 is to 1 based on the balance equation. So we equate these two together and then we solve for X. That gives us the MR of the unknown. We compare to the periodic table, we will get strontium. Number 9, we have a gas that has a volume of 3 dm cube under room temperature pressure. So we convert the 3 dm cube to number of moles because one mole will occupy 24 dm cube. So number of moles we have will be 1 over 8 moles of gas. Once we have the moles of gas, we multiply by their respective MR of the gases and then we see which one will give us the correct mass. In this case, 1 over 8 moles times MR of 64 will give us 8 grams of sulfur dioxide. The rest of them, you multiply by the MR, you will not get the corresponding masses. Number 10, we have X, which is slightly acidic, and Y, which is slightly alkaline. So, P concluded that X is a strong acid. We can use an equation or some formulas. If it was a strong acid with a pH of 6, it means actually the concentration of H plus is 10 to the power of minus 6, which is much lesser than 2 moles per dm cube. If it was a strong acid, we will expect two, at least 2 moles per dm cube of a H plus concentration. But the H plus concentration based on the pH is only 10 to the power of minus 6, much lesser than expected. So X cannot be a strong acid. Q, extent of dissociation is lower in X than Y. Instead of doing calculations, we can do a bit of reasoning. Starting from neutral, Adding 2 moles per dm cube of X, it decreases the pH by 1 unit. Whereas adding 2 moles per dm cube of Y increases the pH by 2 units. So we can actually reason out that Y dissolves more in water because it affects the pH to a greater extent given the same concentration. So Y will dissociate more than X. So Q is actually correct. Eleven. How can we maintain the highest concentration of HOCl, which is in this equilibrium here? So we look at the conditions. Acidify pool water. If we acidify the pool water, the OH will be neutralize and they will drop and the equilibrium will shift to the right to compensate for the drop in OH- minus, causing HOCl to increase. So A is a feasible way to increase the concentration of HOCl. Number 12, we have two reactions and the difference between the first reaction and the second reaction is the concentration of your thiosulfate. Okay, we have 0 0.02 moles per dm cube at the start, and then the second time we use 0 0.05 moles per dm cube. So we have a higher concentration for the second experiment. 
it will mean that we have more particles per volume that will allow us or allow the particles to collide more frequently. Activation energy doesn't change because there's no um, use or catalyst. That's also applicable for B, there's no catalyst. And then we don't have the particles moving faster because there's no change in the temperature. Thirteen, corn acid and sodium chloride, when they react, the corn sulfuric acid actually donates a proton to your Na. Okay, it is a, it is a don it's a proton donor, so it is behaving like an acid. It forms HCl, which doesn't go to Cl2, unlike your HBr or Hi that goes to Br2 and I2. For HCl, it doesn't go to Cl2, so there's no redox reaction happening uh, subsequently. So there's only th it behaving like an acid. Fourteen, we have the precipitates of your silver halides after adding silver nitrate. And then further on, when we add dilute NH3, the only one that will dissolve to a certain extent will be your silver chloride. Okay, because this one describes them as dissolving in excess or dissolving in dilute NH3. The rest don't dissolve well in dilute aqueous ammonia. So the original one must contain chlorides, in this case sodium chloride.